going to be about premarital screening, uh, a process that is actually going on here in the Arab world to help eliminate uh, genetic diseases uh, for any new couple who get married. And it's proven to be very effective. But to tell us more about premarital screening and what you have to do to make sure that you're all screened up and ready to go, we have a very special guest joining us in the studio. Allow me to welcome Dr. Yazid Al Sheikh, who's chairman of the clinical laboratory department and also head of. Um, the Medical Genetic Chair at King Saud University. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Yazid, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. Um, it's a pleasure having you on the program, of course, Dr. Yazid. We're talking about premarital screening, and just to clarify it to viewers, what do we mean by premarital screening, and what does it actually entail? Okay, um, Bismillah. I think um, it's it's uh, it's important to note at the beginning that. Mm -hmm. uh, as a rule of thumb, all human diseases have some aspect of genetic disorder, of genetic factors at playing. Absolutely. Either a direct factor or a direct causative factor or a predisposing kind of condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, Saudi Arabia is not a um, is not a uh, an exception. It's actually the the law, the uh, the world's uh, highest consanguinity marital rate in, in, in the world. So wow. people in Saudi Arabia get married to their cousins more than Absolutely. anywhere in the world. Absolutely. So get, getting back to your question, um, as a result of uh, some genetic disorders that are inherited through marriage, mm -hmm. uh, this screening program has been devised to at least uh, notify the, the groom and bride-to-be mm -hmm. uh, that there are a risk of uh, a child mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a certain condition. Mm -hmm. That's very so what can they do then? I mean, just to following up on that, if two couples do have the screening and there are there is a risk of developing certain genetic conditions, uh, is there any scenario where, for instance, the couple cannot actually go through with the marriage? Or in most scenarios, can, let's say, the mother take a, a type of medication before uh, planning to have kids? Yeah. Well, f first of all, it's advisory, so it's not compulsory. Even if the risk is very high, uh, the genetic counsellor, uh, that conducts the test and gives mm -hmm. the information does not suggest anything. Okay. We just give an informed uh, evaluation of the situation mm -hmm. and it's for the couple uh, to decide. However, um, if, if, if the couple still wants to go through with the marriage, mm -hmm. then there are, there are techniques that could um, screen for these disorders um, be, uh, before, uh, let's say, before conception mm -hmm. and during conception before uh, delivery. Wow. Um, if, um, if a certain disease is screened for using a technique known as uh, prenatal, uh, uh, prenatal diagnosis, mm -hmm. then uh, you could either terminate the, 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 the pregnancy, you, mm -hmm. could, you, could, you, could, you could make a decision. Absolutely. But it's left down to the couple. It's always left mm -hmm. down to the couple. Mm -hmm. So it's advisory. Even though so they're tested positive, for example? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And sir, so, um, you, you mentioned that, of course, this is a very important testing done to uh, to couples before getting married. I really do believe that. Um, can you give us some um, some kind of diseases or disorders that can be passed on to offsprings, for example? Well, um, th there's a, a long list of uh -huh. disorders that can be transferred to the offspring. Maybe what's, what's more what, common what here in problems? the kingdom? Yeah. Well, we have um, mostly a group of disorders known as hemoglobinopathies, okay. or blood diseases blood of, disease. of the hemoglobin mm -hmm. of, of blood. And these are mainly sickle cell anemia okay. and thalassemia. thalassemia mm. But um, uh, I think there are a, a larger set of disorders that are mm -hmm. not recognized. Mm -hmm. uh, I think so at University at the Chair of Medical Genetics. Mm -hmm. What we do is we are we're pursuing several uh, research lines. One of them okay. is mm -hmm. uh, looking into inborn errors of metabolism. Mm -hmm. Now, if I said sickle cell anemia, you, uh, it, most people would recognize it. If I said thalassemia, mm -hmm. people. But if I said, for example, PKU, phenylketonuria, or okay. let's say uh, maple, maple syrup urine disease. Wow, these maple are syrup. <laughs> mere, yeah, no, these are oh, wow. exotic it does sound new. diseases, mm -hmm. but they are prevalent in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. These are a group of disorders that are yet to be screened for and are prevalent mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. within a group. So Absolutely. it's not only the sickle cell anemias and the thalassemias mm -hmm. that we should look for. Uh, but I think the ministry is, is the Ministry of Health I'm, mm -hmm. uh, is, is doing a very good job. Absolutely. They've reached around, I think it's 300,000. So I did my homework yesterday mm -hmm. and I asked uh, uh, some of the officials. So uh, it's around 300,000 couples that have been screened, mm -hmm. mainly for uh, infectious diseases and for thalassemia and sickle cell anemia. Mm -hmm. 
the infectious diseases are kind of to, to prevent not the offspring, mm -hmm. but the the the, 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 um, let's say the, mm -hmm. the couple themselves from contracting the disease from the other side. So okay. I think it's HIV, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is worldwide, absolutely, yeah, and uh, uh, and hepatitis B mm -hmm. or hepatitis. B and C mm -hmm. form, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very successful program. But in a perfect world, I would increase the list of disorders mm. to be screened. That's good. Yeah. Absolutely, um, Dr. Yazid, is <coughs> now is the premarital screening uh, compulsory here in the kingdom? Because I know in other parts of the world, let's say for the United Arab Emirates, they've made it compulsory and obligatory mm -hmm. for a couple to actually have the screening before um, getting the official marriage going on. It's not yet compulsory here, as I understand, or is it? I think it is. It, it is, is compulsory. compulsory. Mm -hmm. But if it's positive, it is. Uh, that does not mean that they will prevent the marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just an informed decision Absolutely. that has to be taken. So yes, so the, the test is compulsory. It's part of the official, uh, let's say, uh, regulation of Absolutely. getting married. Absolutely, so but mm -hmm. only if a couple have had the test and they've got proof that <coughs> they've had the test, will the marriage go on? Yes. This but is amazing, but, but Dr. Yazid, what about the, sorry, excuse me, Diana, the type of, uh, the, what is the process of the screening? Just to, to clarify that to people, is it as simple as a blood sample or is there more to be uh, done through uh, the process? For the disorders that I mentioned, a blood sample is sufficient. Mm -hmm. yes. so, so it's a blood sample and there are rapid technologies that are used to detect, for example, <coughs> the mutated or abnormal gene in the case of sickle cell anemia or thalassemia mm -hmm. or the viral genes in hepatitis and in HIV. So you can use genetic technologies or genetic techniques to mm -hmm. to look at the disease gene within okay. the person himself or to check out if there are any foreign DNA vis-a-vis mm. uh, -vis, uh, HIV and uh, That's HPV. Yeah. That's interesting. And Dr. Yazid, you mentioned just brief, uh, brief, uh, before Russia's question, you, you mentioned that um, the tests <coughs> are mandatory, you have to do the test, yeah. but it's up to the couple if they wish to go or to proceed with the the marriage. Mm. Now, my question to you is that is there a marriage counselor? Is there is there, for example, a consultant that you can talk to who can give you an idea of what are the consequences if you decide to proceed with the marriage? Well, yeah, you, you're stressing a very important point. There are, but they're not enough. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think there are enough uh, genetic counselors there to get the couples down, sit down with them, and give them a whole, you know, uh, let's say. Uh, lecture on what are the risks because mm -hmm. risk calculation is, is uh, and assessment is is a, is a quite a complicated thing yeah, mm -hmm. true. especially for uh, complex disorders absolutely, uh, absolutely. Compl um, you, you can classify genetic disorders into although I have reservations on this classification mm -hmm. single gene disorders okay. and complex disorders mm -hmm. okay. single gene disorders are usually disorders that are shown at birth mm -hmm. they are defects um, uh, sickle cell anemia for example other diseases However, the most <coughs> common disorders are like uh, diabetes, mm -hmm. heart disease, and cancer, yeah. which have a very strong genetic uh, mm -hmm. factor. Okay. Right. Absolutely. And some of them are familial, meaning they are inherited within the family. Mm -hmm. So not only for that, I think, I think most of the major hospitals do have them. So but I think the, the, it's, it's, it's a speciality that I encourage my students to pursue. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and um, yeah, uh, uh, there is a need for uh, increased. I hope so. I really hope so. I think I think it's also it's important for couples to go through uh, such therapy yeah. before they uh, carry on with the marriage, so they can have an understanding of absolutely, well, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. But in connection to Diana's question, actually, which is uh, well touched on, about a therapist or somebody who can actually counsel or somebody who can actually talk with the couple, how do you see the couple's reaction if tests are proven to be positive? I mean, let's say um, the risk is high. Um, we'll talk about something a little bit more serious how do couples react to this I mean just at the first glance well I mean it, it's, uh, it's really subjective uh, it could be an excuse for some couples to, to, to separate or it's, it's actually um, it's always as if uh, there's no love involved of well, course. If there's no, but it's always it's always it's always devastating actually mm -hmm. yeah. um, but devastating for the couples because they're ill-informed. Mm -hmm. As I said, if there is a risk of uh, having a child that is affected, mm -hmm. that's not the end of the world. There mm -hmm. are methodologies that are there, there are tests Absolutely. that Absolutely. could be used. Um, uh, however, they are on the, let's say, 
uh, expensive side mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. things. So uh, hopefully with with time and with uh, the advan advent of, of uh, medical molecular biological techniques, uh, they will be more readily available and widespread mm. uh, for everyone to, 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 to use. But uh, as I said, there are facilities in the, in, in the kingdom mm -hmm. that have these um, uh, technologies. For example, if, if uh, you know how diseases are either recessive or dominant. Recessive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. diseases are related to consanguine, mes uh, consanguine mes uh, marriages, yeah. mm -hmm. but um, dominant disorders, are, mm -hmm. you just need one parent to, to, to transmit it. So, uh, and in high-risk uh, cases, exactly. you can do what is known as pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, mm -hmm. meaning that you can do artificial fertilization in the lab mm -hmm. and then screen the embryos that are generated mm -hmm. and choose the unaffected embryos mm -hmm. and then re-implant them into the mother. So there, there are is ways around it. There are ways around it. The mm -hmm. only problem is that they're expensive and they're Absolutely. not very available. Yeah. That's very interesting. And you also mentioned, sir, that um, uh, this, this screening is very important because, as we know, that there are a lot of uh, diseases and disorders going around. And not only, let's say, with people who uh, marry uh, within the family, for example, as is a very common practice here in the Middle East. And I really think that, of course, let's say if you, even if you marry someone outside the mar uh, outside the family, mm -hmm. there are, could be there disorders. But I think the, the I think the risk is increased when you marry someone within the family. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's true, right. Yes, because um, it's it's a percentage. Uh, you are more likely to inherit something that is closer to your gene pool. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as you said. Uh, uh, you could, you, by chance, it could happen from. Even uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but even if both uh, both people or both persons are healthy, yes, within the you family, you could be a healthy carrier. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So you could You're have still a carrier. Yeah, you could have no, you could no have, you have, you have no symptoms whatsoever. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, you carry the defaulted gene. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's and that's the problem. Um, and that's the problem with these autosomal recessive disorders. Okay. Because you need so two two chromosomes that are affected, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you usually carry one that's affected. And if that's you, by chance, um, mm -hmm. uh, transmit the affected one to your offspring, then, mm -hmm. um, and the mother also, mm -hmm. uh, then you get an affected child. Wow. Absolutely. And Absolutely. there's always this mix-up when you say um, there's a 25% chance of an mm -hmm. affected child. Mm -hmm. That's very common. People who have three children mm -hmm. already that are not affected think that Okay, now my se my fourth child has oh, to be affected exactly. because there's a 25 percent. I only have three, mm -hmm. but that's not true. It's uh, always the risk of having an affected child mm -hmm. uh, is a calculation of each independent pregnancy. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So it's okay. 25 for each child. For each sure. child. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, so the last child's not going to get the subtotal <laughs> of 75 as people assume. Not this at is all. this is an important point. It's a good thing that you clarified this, Dr. Yazid. Yeah. But let's talk about the screening program in general. I mean, how effective do you think it will be in the future in eliminating or